understand Docker, we need to understand images in more detail. So let's deep dive into images. So Docker images are nothing but immutable files. There's, those are essentially snapshots of a container. Similar to the VM snapshots, the Docker images are snapshot of running containers. We'll, I'll showcase that in a while. Container is again an instance of a Docker image. Once you take a snapshot, you can run containers from that snapshot as many as you want. And images are stored inside a repository called Docker registry. Uh, the classical example is hub of hub.docker.com that we have seen. And also images are cached on the host machine by Docker engine. Now to understand the Docker images better, let's create one Docker image. Now I have my Docker images here. I have Nginx, BusyBooks, and Hello World. Let me run Docker uh, run minus p eighty eighty and uh, I'll say minus minus name my web nginx. Now I started my nginx container. You see my web here. Now if I want to get inside the container, I have to do exec my web in bash. I'm inside the container. Let me go and write one file inside my www directory, right? USR shared uh, nginx html. This is where all the files are remaining. Echo, Sunit Parekh. I have test.html. If I try to access, I should be able to access that on my local host. Slash test.html. See, it's there, right? Now this image is there. I'm good. I can see that these are the images that I have. Now, if I want to take a snapshot of this image, uh, of this container which is running, I can create my own images. That's how simple it is. So the command to create images, Docker commit. I say I want to take snapshot of my web which is running. And I want to say my nginx, right? And if you see, I've taken a snapshot of a running container. Now, if I see Docker images, I have my nginx image as part of the image list. You remember, I did not have this image here in this first command, right? Here, I don't see that image. When I run this command now, I have this new image which is created using the command docker commit here. So that's how simple it is to create an image. So you start a container, do whatever you want to do, install softwares, install application, and you are ready with your own image. Now, let's say I'll stop my current image, which is my web. Fine. I'll remove as well. So so that way I can reuse it, okay? So I do not have anything in my Docker. Now, we just say Docker images. I have this, I want to now run Docker run minus P. Instead of using Nginx, I want to use my Nginx. So it started, if you notice my web, started here, which is running out of the image my nginx, you can see here, right? Now, if I go and try to hit the test.html, it is still there. Let me give you the example. If I run another one, minus p81, my web 2 using nginx, right? The, the original nginx image, not the modified one. So it's running on my web 2, 81 port, right? So I have this my web 2, which is running out of the image Nginx and on port 81. So if I go here now and try to hit 
on port 81. I don't have that file. Still, Nginx is running. See, so this is how I can create my image out of the existing images. So just pin up a container, do whatever installation, application software, adding configurations, and then take a snapshot, which is exactly like VM world, right? But it's so easy to create image. In Docker, there is a concept called Docker file, which is nothing but a programmatic way to create images. Now, Docker file is a simple text document that contains the series of commands or instructions that assembles the image for you. One of the first instructions that you can specify in Docker file is which base image you want to start with. So you can take any Linux base image or a image which are already available on Docker Hub or your own uh, private repository. Then you can specify what is my working directory. So any following commands that you execute will be executed in the working directory. And this will create the directory inside the container. After that, in general, application develop deployment and all that you need to copy a lot of files from your host machine to your container image so there are two commands add and copy which copies from your host machine to your destination path in the image there is a difference between add and copy uh, you can just google it and you will be able to find that out easily then you can execute as many commands as you want inside your Docker container by using run instruction. So run instruction is nothing but any uh, Linux commands that you want to execute, you can execute using run command. Then you specify which port is exposed by the container. This is just the instruction documentation type. After that, now you need the starting point to start your container right and you have to specify that process id right which is the for, uh, which is the process id one so cmd and entry point are two instructions that can help to specify what is your entry point in the container or when you start the container when you run the container what are the in, uh, executables that you want to run as part of the container so that's how we can specify the Docker file. We'll look into this in more detail. So let's understand that how this Docker file is executed and helps in building an image, right? So now, if you notice, I have a Docker file here. I have a Docker daemon, which is nothing but my Docker container engine. I have an image cache on the same host machine, and I have containers which are running, right? And I have a Docker registry here. So now let's say Docker file. I give instruction to Docker daemon build my image using this Docker file. As soon as it is uh, specified, it first pulls the base image from registry. That's what we give in the first command, right? Then it saves it on the local cache. Using the base image that it downloaded, it starts the container. It executes the instruction given in the Docker file, and then it saves that as a intermediate image cache. Now this step four, five and six that you see here is repeated for each instructions. So for every instruction that you execute, it will save the intermediate image into image cache. Now when finally everything is done, you can push the final image to your registry. Let's see this whole in action to understand this i need to have an application running right so here in front of you i have a simple node.js application it has two files package.json and server.js in my package.json i'm just creating a dependency specifying express which is used to create a node.js application and in my server.js all the standard uh, lines and only one line which is hello world. So I'm saying hello Sunit and the host name that I'm printing. It is simple hello world uh, Node.js application. There is nothing other than these two files in my uh, Node application. 
let me run my node application first so my uh, i i have a node file here i'll do npm install first i'll get all my packages installed on my local machine i'm all good i'll just do npm start so if you if you look at the package.json i've given a start uh, command here with node server.js so i'm just saying npm start if you look at this localhost 8080 i have this application running which says hello sunil and my host name that's all so that's a simple app now so let's create a docker file for packaging this node application so the name of the docker file is docker file the default name is docker file now in this the first instruction that i have to put is from and now to pick up a base image i have to go and look up for the base image which i want to use for the node application so if i go to the hub i can search for node i can pick up any node js image right here there are many images available you have to choose the right image after some time i'll also give explanation of which one to choose uh, in which case right i'll just pick up very simple uh, images which is small in size i'll just say node lts alpine so i have now picked up my node image which is there lts alpine see here this is the image that i choose now the next step that i want to give is my working directory so i can choose my work directory as any path that i want to give i'll pick up one path which is user source app okay so i've given my working directory as well the next step is to copy my files from my machine to the docker current directory so from current directory i want to copy all my source code into the docker container so i have copied that the next step i want to do is run npm install i want to install all the packages in my container after this i will specify which port i want to expose which is nothing but 8080 now i want to have a entry point which is my starting executables that i want to specify i'll just say npm start right with this i am done with my docker file right now let's build the image to build the image the command is docker build then specify the name of the image that you want to create and where is your docker file or what is your current context that you want to give in our case which is dot i can specify minus f and then i can specify which docker file i want to give i can use uh, another docker file as well so it's a context where my host current directory is from where i want to run the instructions and the docker file by default it looks up for the docker file in the context with the name docker file so once i run this you'll notice that it is first downloading my node js alpine image this might take a little bit of time as i am downloading it for the first time okay you'll notice that all of the instructions that we have given is run right the first instruction which says step 1 of 6 from node lts alpine it downloaded that it then ran the second step which is my working directory then it ran the third step 
copy my code then it run the npm install right then expose then entry point which is my start container right now with this step one to six it has executed all the steps and created my image now if i go ahead and do docker images i can see that i have my image there which is hello world node.js so i have my image now i can run this container so i say docker run minus d minus minus name that i want to give to my container hello and hello world node.js is the uh, name of the image started I'll, I'll, sorry Keep my watch running so that you can see now i have my hello world node.js container running with the name hello right now i cannot access the code because i forgot to give the minus p option which i did not expose right i stop my container hello i run my container with port specifying as uh, 8080 map to 8080 okay i have to stop run hello So now my container is started with port forwarding on 8080. If I go ahead and run my localhost 8080, I can see my container running with the container ID printed as the uh, host name. So I have my container running, which I created just now, right? So that's how you create your uh, container. I'll showcase you a few more bits now. when i build the image you have seen that every instructions were executed uh now when i run the image building the image again you'll notice that there is nothing has changed right so step 1 executed step 2 executed and it says i'm using cache because there is no change there in the step 2 step 3 i am again using cache step 4 5 6 all similar just because i have the exact similar instructions and no change in the code as well right now let's go ahead and change one bit in the code so that we'll notice that from step 3 onwards everything is rebuilt again So if I go ahead in my server.js, I say hello world instead of hello Sunit, and if I run my command again, you will notice that step one and two are same. Step three is new. There is no using cache here. Then it runs the npm install again. Once all the packages are downloaded and ready, uh, it will. run the further command so if you notice now i'll just close this part so now in this instruction you'll notice first and two fine three onwards there is no cache so once the instruction from where it cannot leverage the cache it has to rebuild again i'll explain you all this when i explain image layers in more detail the next step for you as a exercise is you have to create a docker image for java application which is available on github so you can download this metadata service which is there on the github this is java spring boot application clone the repository now you have to write your docker file in spring boot application by running mvn package command 
you can build a fact jar executable jar which you can execute using java minus jar and the jar file name jar file is available in the target folder to verify the application since it is using actuator you can just hit the actuator info url and you're good so please do the exercise write your docker file to build a docker image for java application